Hello, and uh, welcome. Uh, this is the first in a new series I'm going to try to do here. This is live, but uh, the first uh, live is just going to be a 10 short minute review of a whiskey. And we're going to start with Lefroy Carriage's 15 year. Uh, I've been out of the uh, video uh, game for a bit. I took a little break, but this is the first of the series and hopefully it goes well. And I'll start a new live after this one. Um, for some discussion with you guys uh, in more detail. Let's get to this. Now, this is um, not the 2015 carriages. This is a 15 year old carriages. Big difference. And uh, one of the main differences is the type of peat that's used. From what I remember reading in the review, uh, one of my friends said was that uh, the Port Ellen peat's different. That was the one I think, and you know, I could be reversing this, uh, was the one used in the uh, 2015 carriages. This one is their own. They actually uh, use their own peat for this, uh, which is uh, comes from a different area. And it's a, this is supposedly is slightly peatier than the uh, typical carriages. The weird thing, though, is, is you might notice that this one does not have the high ABV. It's a 43%. It does have an age statement, which I really like. The 43 ABV makes me a little nervous. And uh, as you can tell, I've, I've, this is toward the end of this bottle. I'll tell you about some of my own uh, personal um, effects that I, you know, that I had from this. But basically, a really nice pee off the get-go. And um, this takes a little time uh, with this one. This is not a, a real fast, uh, you know, pour and sip whiskey. Uh, it's a lot different with one drop of water, literally. Um, if you go in neat, it's fine from the beginning. But give it time and always try it with a, a drop of water, even at 43% or even 40%. It does make a big difference. And this is a good example of why. Um, it's fainty, fainter than um, other Lefroigs because uh, they are higher BV. But the piece definitely there. You still get the TCP iodine, the creosote. Just a little more, a little, uh, little distant level. It's it's uh it's still a good nose though, um, and you can get some fruit and some faint floral properties in there. Maybe even some heather, slight lavender type of uh, floral thing going on, but good. Kind of reminds me of the Anklemore on the nose. Uh, I think the Anklemore might have been a little heavier on the nose, um, maybe because I think it's a little higher BV. Uh, I'm going off memory. I think it's closer to 46 48%. But um, still, not bad. It's good and neat. It's, it's, it's got... Um, at the very beginning, it's got some good Lafroy typical qualities with peat smoke, it covers, you know, everything. It's got that dark chocolate note hidden in the back end. With this one, it's a little, it's a little more interesting. So there's a little bit of a rhubarb, almost a, a sour, uh, bitter almost note to it. If you like rhubarb in like a pie, then I think you'll be a fan of it, but it's definitely a tart. It, it's almost uh, has a bit of a, a grapefruit, type of, of thing in the back going on. I'm not a huge grapefruit fan. Um, I don't mind sour or bitter notes with a whiskey if it's very well balanced. This does not have very much, um, it doesn't have very many sweet properties uh, that are going on here, but it is it is balanced. But I do tell you what, I, I noticed a huge difference when um, even left after letting it sit out for 15 minutes, and I usually blow per year, one minute per year, um, it, it needs, it needs definitely a drop of water. I'm not talking, you know, much more than a literal drop. So get your pipette out and just give it literally like a drop of water. I know it sounds crazy and it, I promise it will not, it will not dilute the whiskey. You won't notice a strength difference at all. The only thing you'll really notice when I'm thankful is that it'll take the, the grapefruit pithiness and the, those tones and it'll give it more of a rounded caramel 
uh, creme brulee kind of aspect to it, which I think brings it more in balance. And I, that might be why they decided not to do um, a 40 year old. They wanted to, you know, give a little room where you could put a, a drop or two on it and play around with it. Now, why they didn't do this as a cast strength, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I would have rather seen it at 50 plus percent ABV and uh, enjoy it, but. You know, it is aged, and I think with the age, uh, maybe that's where a lot of the uh, the uh, percentage uh, difference comes from. I'm not quite sure why, other than the cask, but it's it's definitely uh, all first full bourbon barrels, so it does have that going for it. It it doesn't have the sweetness though of the mid era um, carriages from 20. I believe that was 2016. If I'm Remembering correctly, yeah, 2015 was the uh, the other one with the barley. But this uh, the Mediara cask was was a sweeter, and I enjoyed that one a lot. I'm not about, I'm not so sure if this one meets the, that type of cow or that mark, but it's still a good dram. Also, a touch of water brings out. Uh, more of a slightly briny maritime note that I was looking for in before the drop of water. I'm not sure why that is, but it definitely um, brings down that sour bitter note. Not as tart. And it does remind me more now of an Anquemore, maybe with a little bit of the 18, uh, even the white label 18 being uh, together with it. It's interesting. It's got some nuttiness to it. And the Uncle Moore has a bit of the uh, hazelnut factor going on, which I think this one does as well on the finish. Um, it is dry on the finish. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, it depends on, on you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of dry finishes. I like more of a Lagavulin 16 finish that lasts for like an hour or two. Um, but with that said, the sweetness after the drop is still there, and I do like the, the fruit slash lavender floral um, dry finish. It's, it's medium length, I'd say. Not a bad dram, not the best carriages ever either. Um, and I have had many of them. I've had the port wood, the... Um, I've had the Amontillado, the Madeira, the Quarter Cask, the uh, newer uh, strength, uh, the cast strength of the uh, Triple Wood, um, and the Fino. I've had a, a lot of different ones. This one is still a good whiskey, though. Um, a lot of the, the Carriages series, I would rate in the 4 to 4.5 arena, uh, 1 to 5 stars, 0.25 increments. This one I'm going to give, um, it's still solid, I think a 3.75. Uh, out of five. It's still good. It takes more time. It's not one of those pour and sip whiskeys. I think you have to sit down and, and really uh, go through all the motions. This is, it's actually very complex. And I think the year um, statement, the age statement makes a big difference there. Well, hopefully this was a, a bit insightful. I forgot to turn my uh, timer on, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I know a lot of guys are already commenting. I'm going to shut this short review down and start a new live stream that will have some discussion after the, the show and that could go on for a while and you're more than well you know be invited to that so stick around for that and uh hopefully the new review system will go well as well have a good one slanchava guys i'll start the new feed in a second